So for um, number 20, they want us to take the area bounded between these two curves here and um, x is equal to 2, and then revolve it about the line um, y is equal to negative 2. So I should have written this here, y is equal to negative 2. Um, so when we revolve, what is going to happen here is, um, I'm going to take this section here. Actually, this is not a very good color for us. Let me try something more vivid, yeah. So we're going to take this little section here that's between these two curves, and then we're going to revolve it, so it's going to form a um, it's going to form a cylinder like this that gets wrapped around the line um, y is equal to negative two, right? And so this cylinder here, if we think about uh, we can think about it as an infinitely thin sheet of paper, right? That gets wrapped around the line y is equal to negative two. So when we unwrap it, it forms an area like this, and so. Um, we can say here that the volume is going to be just the sum of these cylinders. Um, the first thing that we have to do is we have to find these two points where they intersect these curves so that we can find our boundaries of integration. So that's what we're going to do. Let's set these equations equal to each other. Um, plus 1 is equal to 2. I'm going to bring everything over to the left. So y squared plus 1 minus 2 gives us minus 1 is equal to 0, and that gives us y minus 1 times y plus 1, because it's a difference of squares, and therefore y is equal to negative 1 and positive 1. And so here we can see that our volume is going to be the integral from negative 1 to positive 1, and we're summing up these areas. However, these areas are going to be areas as function of y because we're summing it up vertically, right? Um, so we're going to have these a y dy. And now what we have to do here is basically just find how to express um, how to express this area in terms of y because they definitely do change as a function of y, right? Like the further that I go on my y-axis, the larger the base is going to be and so on. Um, so my area here is area is base times height, right? Because it's just a rectangle that gets wrapped around. And now let's try to find um, both the base and the height. Um, the base here is pretty easy. It's this little chunk like here that gets revolved. So, and let's think about how to calculate this chunk. Well, this chunk here, remember that we always measure uh, the height from zero. We measure it in this direction. So, given that we measure in that direction, um, we can see here that it's, we go from zero all the way out to where it touches the orange curve, and then plus that little section gives us two, right? So we have that um, height of orange plus this green is equal to 2. Therefore, this green thing is going to be the distance of 2 minus this little chunk. So green is going to be equal to um, 2 minus, minus the height of the orange, right? Um, so let, let us write that in. Let me just delete this so it doesn't get too... Um, too crowded for us. Okay, so the base is going to be 2 minus the height of the orange is y squared plus 1. That's our base. And what about the height? Um, well, as we can see here, this height is going to be just the base of my cylinder, which is a circumference, right? It is a circle here. So the circumference of any circle is given by 2 pi r. However, we don't want it in terms of r. We want it in terms of y, because we're integrating with respect to y, right? Because if it were just r, um, it we would treat it as a constant, because it does not depend on y. So um, let's give it a random value, right? Let's give it, uh, maybe at this point here, we have y is equal to... Um, we'll call it 0 0.5. I'm just making stuff up, but for you guys to... Um, understand how that radius is going to be. So that's 0 0.5. Well, what's the distance between negative 2 all the way out to 0 0.5? Well, that distance, I have to go first uh, from negative 2 to 0. I have to transverse a distance of 2 and then plus wherever I'm at on my y-axis, right? Um, if I were a little bit closer to here, maybe at 0 0.9, I would still have to go 2 from, from negative 2 to 0, so that's a distance of 2, plus a distance of 
So that distance is just 2 plus wherever I'm at on my y-axis. So this is um, the circumference, so it's 2 pi, 2 pi, and instead of the radius, my radius is just 2 plus y, right? Um, so once I have this, we now that have that our area is base times height, so it is 2 pi times uh, 2 plus y times um, 2 minus y squared minus 1 is just uh, 2 minus 1 is 1, right? So that's going to give us 1 minus y squared, so minus y squared. And that's my area. Um, and since we're going to integrate this area, we're going to sum it up from negative 1 to 1. We want to expand it because uh, we want to make it into a polynomial so that we can easily integrate it. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to FOIL it out, right? So let's do that. So that's 2 pi times 2 times 1 is 2. Uh, 2 minus y squared is uh, minus 2y squared. And then y times 1 is plus y. And then um, y times minus y squared is minus y cubed. So now that we have, uh, this is our area in terms of y, right? So once we have this, we can now integrate. So the volume is going to be the integral from negative 1. Um, maybe I'm going to make this a little bit more thicker so you guys can see. It. Yeah. So our volume is going to be the integral from negative 1 to positive 1. 2 pi goes outside because it's a constant. And then we just put in all this expression here, which is the area of, um, of my cylinder at any point, right? The cylinder that wraps around the line y is equal to negative 2. So that gives us 2 uh, minus 2y squared and then plus y um, minus y cubed and all of this times dy. Let me just double check my math, see if we are correct. So that's negative 2y squared minus y cubed uh, plus y plus 2. Okay, that is correct. And then here we are have to um, just integrate it. So this is equal to 2 pi times, um, that's 2y minus 2y cubed over 3 and then plus y squared over 2, and then minus y to the power of 4 over 4. And all of this from negative 1 to 1. So um, let's evaluate our boundaries. This is equal to 2 pi. Let's evaluate it at 1. So at 1, it's going to give us, let's see, 2 minus 2 thirds plus 1 half uh, minus 1 fourth. Uh, let me see if that's right. 1 half, uh, minus 1 fourth, minus 2 thirds. Yep, that's right. And now let's evaluate it at negative 1. So that's going to give us uh, plus 2 when we plug that in. And let's see, minus, minus, plus. So that ends up being a minus. So minus 2 third. Um, and then that gives us minus 1 half. And lastly, this minus goes positive. Um, minus, minus is going to be plus 1 fourth. So, um, this is equal to 2 pi, and let's see, the negative 2 thirds, oops, the, it doesn't cancel out. What cancels out here is plus 1 half and minus 1 half, minus 1 quarter and plus 1 quarter. So that's 2 pi, that gives us 2 plus 2, so 4 minus 4 thirds, which is equal to 2 pi times, um, that is going to give us 8 thirds, and so our volume is going to be uh, 16 pi over 3. And that's what we get um, when we take this area here and we revolve it about the line y is equal to negative 2. Let me just scroll that. Yeah, we're done.